Hello there and welcome to this week's online service from St Mary's Church in Ferndown and All Saints Church in Hampreston. My name's Ollie and I'm the curate here and we're so delighted that you could join us for this service today. Now, today we're going to be taking uh, an opportunity to look back over these last 18 months of pandemic and to start to process some of what we've been through before the Lord. And we're also going to take the opportunity to look forward, to think through what we want to be like as a church community as we move forward into this new season. So as we prepare now to worship, I'd love us to remember two things. First of all, we can come to God and worship just as we are. We don't have to pretend to be all okay. We don't have to pretend to be holy. We can bring before God all of our failings, all of our frustrations, all of our disappointments, all of our deep hurt and loss. Come before God just as you are today and allow him to minister to you now where you need it most. Second of all, let's come before God open, open to what God wants to do in us this morning, open to God what God wants to lead us into in this new season. So let's pray. Father God, thank you that we can come now and worship you just as we are. Thank you that you welcome us into your presence. But Lord God, thank you that you never leave us just as we are, that you are constantly healing, challenging us, transforming us to be more like Jesus Christ our Lord. And Father, we give you permission to do more of that this morning. Come change us, come transform us, come equip us, come inspire us as we worship now and we pray that our worship might bring glory to your name thank you lord god that you are good and your love endures forever amen he's our rescuer he's our rescuer
am a city on a hill. I am a light in the darkness. Jesus living in me can change the world. I am a city on a hill. I am a light in the darkness. Jesus living in me can change the world. Let my light shine, let my light shine, let my light shine. Let my light shine, let my light shine, let my light shine. If God is for us, who can stand against me? Let my light shine, let my light shine, let my light shine. If God is for me, who can stand against me? Let my light shine, let my light shine, let my light shine. We are a city on a hill, we are a light in the darkness, Jesus living in us can change the world. We are a city on a hill, we are a light in the darkness, Jesus living in us can change the world. Let your light shine, let your light shine, let your light shine. Let your light shine, let your light shine, let your light shine. If God is for us, who can stand against us? Let your light shine, let your light shine, let your light shine. If God is for us, who can stand against us? Let your light shine, let your light shine, let your light shine. Let your light shine. Today in our services across the benefice, we have the theme of lament, repent and consent. And the first part of that lament is perhaps something that we don't do very often. But basically it means coming before God with our losses, with our pain, with our struggles, holding them before him. And we do that then with hope, knowing that he is good, that he has good plans for us and that we are in his hands. So here is a psalm of lament. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts? And day after day have sorrow in my heart. How long will my enemies triumph over me? Look look on me and answer. O Lord my God, give me light or I will sleep in death. And my enemies will say, I have overcome him. And my foes will rejoice when I fall. But I trust in your failing love and my heart rejoices in your salvation i will sing the lord's praises for he has been good to me let us pray lord we come to you today with our prayers and our petitions we ask you lord to hear them we live in uncertain times Global issues and stories of unrest flood our news bulletins. Pain and distress are commonplace in what we read and what we see. May you bring peace, Lord, to a hurting world. Where there is unrest, bring uncertainty. Where there is hatred, bring your love. May diplomacy, debate and discussion take the place of war, of rumours of war and threats of war. And we think, Lord, of those individuals in war-torn countries that become innocent victims. Be with them, Lord, and their families. Let them know your presence and bless them, Lord. We think, too, of the poor nations in our world with very little defence against the coronavirus. But Lord, we thank you 
that other nations are committing to send out vaccines to their poorer neighbours. And over the coming years, more and more nations would have access to a vaccine. So Father God, speed that up, we pray. Amen. And now Lord, we think of our own nation, the ongoing opening up of services continues to provide an air of uncertainty, continues to give wisdom and discernment to the decision makers of our government. Importantly, may the voice of Christian MPs become more than a whisper, and may we see them placed in positions of authority, and their influence be felt in all corridors of Parliament. We thank you, Lord, for all those who serve our nation, our police force, our NHS services, and our social services, and all those civil servants who provide much needed support to all areas of our society. And Lord, we turn our attention to our community. Help us, Lord, as a church, find ways to bless and to serve our neighbours. The outreach team, Lord, that's meeting at the moment, give them outrageous ideas on how to interact and engage with our town, to bring your love and your message of salvation to our community. No idea, Lord, is too, too daft, too big or too small. May all the ideas be used to expand your kingdom in Ferndown. We think now, Lord of our church and our churches in this area, we thank you for their leaders. We ask you, Lord, to bless them as they serve. And this week, Lord, in St Mary's, the children are watching online New Wine. And I pray, Lord, as they engage with that programme, they learn more of your love for them. May they have fun and enjoy the whole experience. And we thank you too, Lord, for the volunteers who support these things. But also importantly, Lord, as things move on, as other services and activities open up, Lord, there's a real need for volunteers, a real need for those to serve, to step out into new areas. Speak to us, Lord, individually. Give us the confidence we need to step out in faith. Lord, because these all the activities, they need people to volunteer. So Father God, speak to us individually on how we can serve our church, Lord, in uh, bigger and better ways. And lastly, Lord, we think of ourselves. We're all in different places physically, mentally and spiritually. Where change is needed, Lord, we ask you to bring it about. Help us to consider our brothers and sisters when meeting in person. Help us to display your love and your temperament at all times. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Let us say together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours, now and evermore. Amen. Today's reading is from 2 Chronicles, chapter 7, verses 11 to 16. When Solomon had finished the temple of the Lord and the royal palace, and had succeeded in carrying out all he had in mind to do in the temple of the Lord and in his palace, the Lord appeared to him at night and said, 
I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a temple for my sacrifices. When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or command locusts to devour the land, or send a plague among my people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now my eyes would be open and my ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. I have chosen and consecrated this temple so that my name may be there forever. My eyes and my heart will always be there. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, with everyone opting for staycations this year, some of our local visitors' attractions will be pretty busy. Now, everyone loves a National Trust property, especially one with the tea room. So for us, Kingston Lacey is our nearest National Trust property and it will be attracting lots of visitors who will be coming in to admire the works of art in, that it houses uh, or the inspired architecture, or they'll come to marvel at the beautifully laid out gardens. The Bible passage that we've just heard read for today contains a wonderful promise that God gave to King Solomon as the work on his magnificent temple was completed. When it was finished, the temple was unrivaled in its beauty and splendour and in the wealth that it contained and the craftsmanship that went into constructing it. There was nowhere like it in all the earth. But there was something that set it apart from any other great house or mansion. This was the house of God himself. You couldn't just visit there and come away thinking, oh, that was nice, and then start planning your visit to a, another splendid palace. Because the temple was at that time the place of the presence of God. In fact, verse 2 of this chapter tells us that the temple was so full of the presence of God during its consecration that the priests couldn't get in. They, they physically couldn't fit because the temple was so filled with the presence of God himself. So tangible and all-consuming was his presence. And the response of the people was to bow down in worship, falling on their faces before God and responding, he is good. His love endures forever. Now, there's no building, however wonderful, in this world that can elicit that kind of response. It comes only from an encounter with the living God, with the glory of the Lord. And an encounter with the presence of God always leaves us with the conviction that he is so good and a response of heartfelt worship. Now, this was at a real high point in the history of the people of God. Everything was going really well. They celebrated for two weeks and then Solomon sent them to their homes. And the Bible says that they were joyful and glad in heart for the good things the Lord had done. And then comes our passage. And as God appears to Solomon, he speaks to him about when times are perhaps not so good. Now, when God had taught his people his good ways, when he laid out the Ten Commandments and instructed them in the way that leads to life, he had warned them that choosing to ignore his ways would have natural consequences. This is something that we all learn from childhood. If you're warned not to touch a hot pan, but you, you do it anyway, well, then the consequences are a painful burn. If you're told to clean your teeth, but you don't want to, well, that's your choice, but you know that you may not have any teeth by the time you're 23. And as, as we get older, as we move through life, we find the same principle at work. If you don't pay the gas bill, we find ourselves very cold in the winter. If we break the speed limit, you can find yourself out of pocket or on a speed awareness course. Our actions have consequences, good or bad. And God made it abundantly clear by calling his way the way of life, meaning that the consequences of, of not going his way were death. Paul writes in the book of Romans, the wages of sin are death, but the gift of God is eternal life. 
However, the Israelites found themselves in the same predicament that is so familiar to us. However hard we try, we can't keep God's commandments. You may have seen the marshmallow experiment or a similar thing where where a child is left with a marshmallow or a chocolate cake and told not to touch it. And if they resist the temptation, there is a reward. It might be that they get an extra piece of cake or some more marshmallows. But for many, that is just too difficult and they succumb just having a little taste or a little nibble. Don't we know that's how temptation works? And however much we know the consequences, we still don't always make right choices. Living in New Testament times, we have this incredible blessing. We know that Jesus has made provision for exactly this situation. Now, instead of striving to keep the law, we come to him in repentance whenever we fail. We put our trust in him. We believe in him in the fact that he was able to live the perfect life, believing in the forgiveness that he won for us by taking upon himself the punishment for our wrong choices as he was put to death on the cross. Thanks be to God. When we give our lives to Jesus, we become clothed in his righteousness. He gives us new, clean hearts that desire to live for God. But even here in the Old Testament, God gives his people a way back. He says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. God promises that where there is repentance, there is forgiveness, healing and new life. Last week we were thinking about pride and there is no room for pride when it comes to repentance. Again, so often we find it exceedingly difficult to say sorry, to admit that we were wrong, to own our mistakes but it is a necessary prerequisite. We need to be humble enough to come to God and to tell him that we can't make it without him, that we've messed up and we need his help. And that that can feel uncomfortable, but it is so worth it for the results. Sometimes we see repentance as perhaps a negative thing, but actually it is an incredible gift. It's the way back from being stuck from feeling separation from God, from being in a dry place, from being devoured by the ravages of sin. And so often what we see in the Old Testament in a physical sense manifests spiritually in today, in New Testament times. So God says that the consequences of sin could be drought or plague or swarms of locusts. For us, if we've walked away from God, we can feel dry We feel empty and restless. I've walked with God throughout my life, but there have been times when I have wandered away from him. And looking back on those times, I can see that they were the times when I have been the most miserable. And it's not surprising because I'd cut myself off from the source of life and love and joy. And if that is you today, if you resonate with that, if you if you can uh, kind of ex- experience how, what I'm talking about, if that's your experience, can I encourage you, don't waste any time. Come back to God. His arms are wide open, ready to receive you. Know his restoring grace. He is incredibly gracious. He never turns us away. He promises that he will hear us. He promises forgiveness. He promises healing. So what are you waiting for? But the promise here goes beyond a personal restoration, although that is so important and precious. God promises that he will heal the land. Because the thing about sin is that it has far-reaching consequences. In the book of Romans, we read that all creation is groaning because of the effects of sin. And sometimes we really see that evidently played out, don't we? You know, a racist comment doesn't just affect the one on the receiving end. It affects their family, their friends, the perpetrator, and ultimately the whole community 
as distrust and division build up until repentance comes and forgiveness is offered and trust is rebuilt, we can find ourselves as a society stuck in a downward spiral. My granddad in Australia once got stuck in sinking sand and there was nothing that he could do to get out of this mess. He, he found that the more that he struggled, the more, the further into the sand he descended. It was like he was being sucked down. And he had to call out for help. He called and my grandma, who was nearby, was able to offer him a way out with the help of some branches to pull him to safety. God's way is never to leave us stuck. He makes a way. Ultimately, he has made the way through the person of Jesus, who said of himself, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Whatever hole you may find yourself in today, he can pull you out. Call on his name, ask him for his help and he will rescue you. And you will be able to say with the psalmist, he lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. Whatever mire we may find ourselves in as a society, Jesus is still strong to save. He can rescue and restore our nation. He's done it before and he can do it again. And he, he, in this passage of scripture, in these, these promises that God makes to Solomon, we, we hear that God will do that in response to the prayers and repentance of his people. As we come in repentance, as we give ourselves afresh to Jesus, as we ask him to fill us again with his Holy Spirit, we become carriers of his presence, beacons of light in the darkness who can change the atmosphere we see such great need around us today, don't we? We long for revival. We long for the Lord to heal our nation. My prayer is that as people see the presence of God in us, because today we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, we are the ones who house the presence of God. What an awesome thought. As people see his presence in us, they will be drawn to know him and to worship him, declaring the goodness of God, because his love endures forever. Amen. Build your kingdom here, let the darkness fear, show your mighty hand, heal our streets and land, say church on fire in this nation change the atmosphere build your kingdom here we pray set the rule and reign in our hearts again
this service has been a real blessing to you I also hope it's been impactful for you there's a really fantastic bit at the end of the book of Joshua where Joshua the great leader of the people of Israel who leads them into the promised land right at the end of his life gathers all the people together and he exhorts them to continue following after the Lord, to not go after the gods of all the nations around them, to not get distracted by money, wealth, power, status, all the other things that can distract us in life. And he says this, as for me and my household, we will follow the Lord. And I invite you as we look forward to this season that's hopefully coming, a, a season of reopening, I just invite you to make that your declaration. As for me and my household, we will follow the Lord. Just to, know, just, just to let you know uh, that next week uh, our online service might look a little different. We're going to be experimenting with live streaming from our service at St Mary's. Um, so please do be patient if there are a few technical difficulties. But you should be able to find this service um, where you've been finding it so far at the time that is convenient for you. Please do be praying for the team that's enabling that all to happen. Now, just as we finish, let's turn to a prayer from St Paul in Romans. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. God is good. His love endures forever. I pray that you will have a fantastic week and we look forward to to see you again.